So I'm going to speak about exodromy in all its forms. So probably you've never heard about this equivalence. Uh, so I want to talk about its equivalence using some similar word that probably you you know, which is one other. Okay. So yeah. Okay, so, so I'm going to start with some classical theorem in topology, uh, which tells us that if we pick a covering space and then we pick a loop in our base space, uh, then there exists a, a lift of our loop, and this, then this lift is unique up to homotopy. And so, just a, a little reminder uh, a covering space. So it's the following data. So we have a base space, and then we have a uh, discover space, and, and we have a, also a continuum function between both that satisfies some kind of properties. So using this theorem, I'm going to talk about um, about uh, a, a representation of the um, of the fundamental group. So we have an action of the fundamental group of a topological space. In the fiber of the um, in the fiber of the base point, so the the action is given by the following uh, morphism. So uh, if we so if we start with a look in our space, then we have the the following automorphism in the fiber of uh, of our base point. Uh, so f x zero is the fiber of uh, this point. Okay, so. Um, So now, actually, it's a theorem that we have an equivalence between covering spaces and representation of the fundamental groups. Okay, so this is called the monodromy equivalence. So we have this monodromy action, and then we have this equivalence between um, covering spaces and representation of the fundamental group. Okay. So in this talk, uh, I will do some upgrades of abstraction to arrive our exodromy uh, equivalence. So first of all, the first upgrade will be uh, the, no the, the notion of um, a fundamental group weight. So we want to, we want to, um, now we want to work without the pain, uh, without the point based dependence. So for that, we're going to define the following category. So the objects are given by the points of our topological space. And then a morphism between two points is given by a by a homotopy class of path between these two points. Okay, so it's, it's a category. We have objects, and then we have morphism. So this category is called the fundamental groupoid of X. And, and so the the follow then we have the following upgrade. Uh, so now we don't have this dependence of the of the base point. Now in the left side of our equivalence, we have this category of covering spaces. So BRG last time talked talk about this process of categorifying some objects in a really nice way. Uh, but one point to do categorification is that sometimes we have uh, equivalent definition for, a, for the same mathematical object. So sometimes we have to find the good definition to categorify this object. So we want to, Take another point of view about the covering spaces. So I want to I'm going to speak about the sheets. Okay. So um, so let X be a topological space. So a C valued pre sheet is a functor from the open from the category. It's a contravariant functor from the category of open sets of my topological space to the category C. Okay. So we have a category of open sets. We can see um, this. This uh, actually, we have a poset of open sets, and then every poset can be seen as a category. And then the category C, it's a category uh, of coefficients. So last time, Virgil uh, defined a shift uh, using the category of sets. If I remember well, yeah. Uh, we need some hypotheses in our coefficient categories, but, but it's okay. Uh, so you can think about it as I, as I said, as a coefficient category. So you can think about it like sets or more algebraic categories like R modules or, or vector spaces, 
and so on. So a C-value shift on our topological space is a pre-shift such that for any open of our topological space and any uh, open covering, uh, it's open covering, uh, we have that the following diagram is an equalizer in the category C. So if you don't know what does it mean, don't worry, you have to you have to think about it in the way that Virgil uh, told us last time. So the intuition behind this object is that we can obtain the global information from the local information. Okay. So for example, uh, we're going to define the following pre-shift. So we take an open set of our topological space. And then we are going to consider the um, the set of continuous fun functions from our open U to the open to the topological space. Okay. So this is really the this is really the idea behind the pre -shift. So if you want to define a continuous function from an open U to another topological space, you it's it's enough to define locally and have some good compatibilities, and then you have the global output. Okay. So another example of uh, another example of of a pre-shift, I mean a, a shift, is the so we pick an open in our topological space and then we associate the the complex vector space of complex valued function on our topological space uh, in our open U. Okay, uh, it's actually a shift, and then we have more algebra examples. So for example, we're gonna take M as a R module, and then we can define the following pre-shift. So for each open, we associate the module M. Um, and actually, it's not a shift. <laughs> there is some problems about uh, this object, but which is really nice about this object is that there is some interesting point of view, because now for each open in our topological space, we are associating a uh, algebraic object. So if you can think about this shift theory. Um, as a kind of trying to do some parameterized uh, algebraic theories. So, as I said, this is not a shift. So, we have an inclusion from shifts to pre shifts, because a shift is a pre shift that satisfies some additional properties. Uh, and actually, we have a proposition that tells us that we have a left adjoint um, from this inclusion called shift shiftification. Okay. Hard work. <laughs> um, so you can think about it. I don't know if you take uh, a group, you can forget your you can forget your group structure and go into sets, and then you have a way to go from um, from set to group. Um, so you can think this kind of idea as quite similar. It's not that similar because we uh, we think these kind of things like uh, inclusion and not as a forgetful function, okay? So there is a way to pick a pre-shift and then associate a shift. Yeah? So do you want questions at the end of the talk or, or well? Uh, as you want. Uh, so why why is this not a shift? You can construct an example, for example, if you pick a space with two elements, then you, you can you can compute the this constant pre-shift and then the reshiftification. And then uh, you can compute the global section about uh, these two stuff, and they're not the same. Okay. But it's a constant. Is it not always the same module? It's a, it's a constant pre -shift. Yeah, it's all the same module. But then you, if you shift if you shift it by this uh, this pre shift, there's a way to shift if I any pre shift. You will see that the constant shift is not the same as that. Okay, so now we need the definition of a locally constant shift. So a locally constant shift is a shift such that for uh, each point, we have an open neighborhood such that the restriction uh, of our shift to our open is a constant shift, okay? So for example, uh, actually, if you pick uh, X to be the complex number, and then you have a shift of holomorphic functions, um, you can pick the following operator, um, and then you have that the kernel actually is locally constant shift 
on our in, in the complex without zero, but it's not constant there because you don't have a global section. I mean, we are trying to resolve this differential equation. So now we arrive to the to the main theorem of this part. So if we pick a topological space, we have an equivalence of categories between covering spaces and locally constant shifts. Okay. So we pick a covering space and then we send to the following pre-shift. And then we have to show that actually it's a shift and actually it's locally constant. So even by for each open, I send to the sections actually uh, from U to Y. Okay, so the whole point is the following. We start with this equivalence between current spaces and representation of the fundamental group. Then we have this another point of view about covering spaces, which, which are uh, locally constant sheets. And then we have also the representation of the fundamental group. Now we don't want a uh, dependent of the uh, base point. So we have the fundamental groupoid, and now we have this equivalence between locally constant shifts and functors from the uh, fundamental groupoid to sets. Okay, so this last uh, equivalence will be the equivalence that uh, will allow us to put uh, in the context of stratified spaces. Okay, so I don't know if there is some questions before pass to the stratified work. Okay, so let's move to the stratified spaces. So roughly speaking, this exodromy equivalence will be this monodromy in the context of stratified spaces. Okay, so we are really interested in stratified spaces because uh, actually actually, we, we want to have some uh, wide uh, class of good behavior spaces. So in general, you have spaces with singularities, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, the theory uh, is not that strong. So we want to include this some kind of pathological um, spaces in this uh, world of stratified spaces. Okay. So the first definition about, um, about uh, in the world of stratified space will be the following definition. So we pick a poset P uh, and then we define a topology in this poset. Uh, given by the following opens. So there are subsets of our poset such that if I pick two uh, elements of my poset such that the first one is in this subset and then we have that uh, X is greater than, than Y, then we have that Y is also in my uh, in my subset. Okay, so that, defined, uh, that defines that topology, uh, a fun exercise of point set topology. Uh, so, for example, if we take the pose set with two elements, uh, with zero and one with the classical order, uh, we have that the opens are the empty set, uh, the singleton one, and the whole uh, pose set. Okay? So it's for the search in space. So a P stratified space is a pair uh, where X is a topological space and we have a continuous function from our topological space to the poset. So now uh, I remember that we see this topology, we see the poset as a topological space, so it makes sense to talk about a continuous function. Okay. So for example, first example, we have the interval zero one. We can stratify in the following way. So we pick zero as the first as the first stratum. And then we have the rest of the interval at the one stratum. Okay. Then we have another example. Uh, if if we take the um, the circle, we can stratify in the following way. So you you put the zero strata as the two points, and then um, and then you take the rest of the circle as, as the one strata. Now, for example, uh, you can take the sphere. You put the zero strata as a one point in the equator, then you have a one strata in the equator, and then you have the whole uh, sphere as the um, as the two strata. Okay, and now to end, um, we have a different kind uh, of uh, stratified space. 
for example, if we take the real plane, then we have the origin and we have four connecting components. Then we have stratify in the way that each um, each connected component is a is a stratum. Okay. Yeah. So following the three first examples, uh, on any CW complex, there is a natural there is a canonical, canonical stratification. Canonical. Yeah, 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 given by the scalar term. Yeah. That also work for sufficient complexity. Yeah, there is also one for sufficient complexity. Um, okay, so notation we're gonna note uh, this way the and we're gonna call the P a stratum, and then in uh, this way uh, from this from the pre match of the the elements that are greater than P. So now we have an object. What do we want? We want a category. So we have to define a morphism uh, between stratified spaces. Okay, um, so a um, morphism between stratified spaces is uh, the following commutative diagram. So we have the morphism between topological spaces, and uh, we ask to commute uh, the diagram. Okay, so we have this category of uh, stratified spaces, and then the below map is the the set map as well, or it's only no, continuous map. it's a continuous map. Uh, Okay, so now we have the definition. Uh, we have the definition of a strat of a stratified space. So now we want to now we want to have some kind of monodromy equivalence, but in the context of stratified spaces. So for this, we have to define some analog of the fundamental groupoid in the stratified world. Okay, so in in the classical in the classical theory, the fundamental groupoid, it was we have points and we have path between points. Now um, we want to have stratified path, um, and we have to do we have to do the following definition. So we're gonna stratify the uh, the interval uh, in the following way. So we're gonna say that this stratification is monotone if this function, as opposed it, uh, is monotone. Okay, so. I put here the posted with n oh, sorry with with n elements with the usual order, but actually I could put any posted, but after from some reason of compactness, uh, you will end up that your posted has um, a finite number of zero strata. So without those of generality, I can take just the this posted. Okay. So example. No, this is not that I want to. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay, so yeah, here, for example, uh, we have the following. We have the following n stratification with a posted with two elements, which is monotone. Uh, you have the zero strata in red, and then you have the one strata in, in black, which is monotone. Here you have red, blue, black, which is always monotone. But here you have the zero in the zero strata, and then you have one in the zero strata also. Uh, this is blue. I don't know if you could, if you can see, but there's no monotone. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, so now we have uh, we have a stratification in our interval, um, and now we want uh, and now we want to define a path in a stratified space. Okay, so usually if you forget the stratification, you have the classical definition of a path. I mean, a map from the zero one to our topological space. But now I'm going to define an exit path, which is a which is a continuum, which is a map in the category of stratified space from this, uh, from the stratified interval, which, which is uh, a monotone stratification to a stratified space. Okay. So, for example, uh, in this example, if I start with the zero, if I start with the zero strata, uh, 
if I stay here in the zero strata, then I go for the two strata. So this is an exit path. I'm going to the to a from the lower strata to a higher strata. Okay. Then, for example, here I start in the one strata, and then I go to the two strata. Okay. So this this uh, alpha and beta are exit path. So the best examples are the things that doesn't work. So if I start here in the two strata and go to the one to the zero strata, I mean the point. So these are, they are not exit path. And then we have, for example, here if I start in the one strata, then I go to the two strata, and then I go back to the one strata. This is not exit path. Okay. So we have the definition of exit path. Uh, now, so we want to define an analog of the fundamental group. Right? So we have the notion of, of a path between two objects in a stratified space. Now we, we need uh, a definition of a homotopy between two uh, exit paths. Okay. This is a, such a weird definition. Um, so homo homotopy between exit path. So it's a map from the product of the interval such that the restriction to the boundary uh, is of this form and such that if I fix uh, each, if I, fix, if I fix an element here, so I have, a, I have a map from the interval to the to my topological space, I ask that is an exit path, okay? And there is another condition, which is called the chain homotopy, uh, which says that Actually, yes, this stratification is finite polyhedra. Okay, it's a, it's a really a, a technical it's a really a technical assumption to to make the things work. So um, you, you you have to think in the following way: you have this notion of exit path. You want to have a good notion of homotopy that respect the the stratification. Okay. Okay. So now we can define our exit path category. Uh, our exit path one category uh, in the following way. So the objects are points of our topological space and morphism are homotopy classes of exit path uh, between two points, okay? Um, so for example, if if we take the poset with one element, I mean the trivial poset, the exit path is actually the fundamental group rate, which is very nice. Uh, then, for example, if we pick the post with two elements, um, okay, so now uh, we pick a post with two elements and we're going to stratify, uh, we're going to stratify the, the real line. So the, the zero strata are given here by the points in uh, green and the uh, one strata are given by these segments uh, in blue, okay? Um, so what do we want? We want to compute this exit path category. So we have to look about the, the this exit path. So if I start here, I can, I can go to the right, but I cannot enter in this point because, because I'm asking for exit path, okay? So for each green point, I have a morphism going to the right. And then if I start here, I can go to the left. So I have a morphism uh, going from green to blue. Okay. And then we can repeat, we, we can we can do we can do that that for all the points. Okay. So this is the a really simple case of exit path category. The representation of the exit path category for sure. Um so we have also another kind of samples. So if if I start with the circle with the zero strata as a point, and then the rest of the circle uh, is the one strata. So I have here uh, I have here a path going from 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 this point in this. In, that, in this direction, and actually I have also a path going in this direction. But but you can see that these paths are exit paths, and they're not equivalent because, I mean, if I can go in the other direction, I have to pass uh, through the zero strata. 
and I cannot do that because uh, it's exit path. Okay. So the the exit path category uh, of this is the following uh, is the following graphical representation. I'm not looking at the constant path. Okay. So I'm I'm looking for the interesting one. Okay. So I really want to understand. I really I really want so if you have any question you can you can tell me. Because it's really important to to understand the to understand the, the one case because then go higher. So now if if I pick the if I pick the the torus with the following certification, so uh, I'm gonna put a zero strata at this um at this loop and then the rest of the torus um is the yeah. one strata. Okay. So what can I do? I can do a lot of things. So for example, I if I start in my one uh, in my zero strata, I mean this loop, I can stay forever in this loop. So I have an automorphism uh of this point. Okay. Um but then for example if I start in my zero strata I can go I can go to the right and make the loop here but I cannot go back to the zero strata so I have this morphism from from zero strata to one strata but I can also go in the other direction so I have also another morphism from the zero strata to the one strata but you have also all the loops in your own all the loops in your um in your one strata so you have also automorphism in your in your one strata okay so now if we pick the the following uh pick the following complex even by the canonical certification actually uh which is the we have the zero strata here the one strata here and in black we have the two strata so we can go from zero to the one strata, so we have a morphism, we have a we have an arrow here. Then I can go through the two strata without pass uh, the one strata. So I have also uh, an arrow going from the green to the black. And I can go also from the one strata to the two strata. So we have also this uh, bar. Okay, so now. Uh, I'm gonna take the the circle, um, and now the full the the full circle, circle. So we have we already know that we have um from this from this strat I can go to the left and then I can go to the right. So I have these two arrows. But if I start in the one strat, I can go to the two strata, this arrow, and I, if I start in the one strat, uh, in the zero strat, I can go to the to a strat. So I have this group. And we have the last example, which is uh, if I start with the circle, but now I have only two strata before I had three, uh, three strata. Uh, so I can start in the, in the zero strata and I can go through the one strata. And then I can I can stay forever in the zero strata, so I have an an automorphism um, of my zero strata. Okay. And an exercise, uh, you can try to find the exit path category of the Mobius band with the following certification. Okay. Okay. So uh, so now we have. This this analog of the fundamental groupoid. So I remember you that uh, in the monotony equivalence we have the locally constant sheets, and then in the right we have the functors from the uh, from from the one uh, from the fundamental groupoid to sets. We have an analog. Um, we have an analog of the fundamental group, uh, and then we have we want to have an analog of the uh, locally constant sheets. Uh, okay, I have a question, uh, which is so here on the definition of uh, of exit path category that you put, you said that the objects would be the points of X, yeah. uh, but then in every example you showed, it seemed like you would actually have one object per st per strata. 
so so will that always be the case or or is it just specific to the examples you showed just to me uh, i mean it's, it's the clearest way to say the things i mean otherwise i have to put a lot a lot of uh, points here. sure but but so are you saying that the exit path category is always equivalent to one where you only have one object per strata or is that not true I, I mean I'm putting together all the connected components of each strata okay each connected component yeah, yeah. okay yeah yeah in this case all the example is like uh, yeah you have uh, yeah the strata more connected that's why then yeah, yeah, yeah. okay thank you Thank you. Okay, so now we have the notion. Uh, yeah, as I said, we want to have some notion of, um, I mean, the, the analog of the loop reconstruction shift in the stratified world. So for that, we have to define. Um, so we have to define the notion of a constructible shift. So for that, uh, I'm gonna, I'm going to pick a, a stratified space and a shift in my space. Uh, I will say that this shift is constructible if the restriction restriction to each strata is locally constant for all uh, for all the elements of our process. Okay. So before we had this notion of locally constant, now we have this notion of constructible, uh, which means that for each strata, uh, my shift is locally constant. Okay. So it's really this this way to think. Really, this way to think about this stratified space. I want to cut my topological space in different pieces uh, that are well behaved. So, if we consider, and we consider shifts in my stratified space, um, I want to have this notion. Okay. So, it's it's quite hard to to give a, a good uh, example of constructible shift without entering uh, algebra geometry example. Uh, but I will cheat a little bit because we can see uh, we can see shifts, I mean locally constant shift as covering spaces. So if I start with the real line, stratifying the following way, so I pick the zero strata um, as the origin, and then we have two connected components as the one strata. So I can take the following covering space, I mean the real line with two origins. Which is locally, uh, which is locally constant, because I, I, I'm I'm taking the, the I mean the the shift associated to when I see this space as a uh, covering space, so we have not, nothing to do. So I'm really really sorry to not have a more interesting uh, example. Um, so if we go back to our equivalence, so we have locally constant shift in our topological space and functors from the um, from the fundamental group of two sets. So now we want to go to the stratified world, so we have to find the analog of each of these objects. And now we have the constructive constructible shifts and the functors from the exit path category to sets. Okay. So there is so there is a theorem by McPherson in the 19th that tell us that if our topological space is a nice stratified space, it means it's a conically stratified space, then the categories of constructible shifts and the functors from the exit path category to, to set are equivalent. Okay. So I um, will not define the notion of conic of conically stratified space, but I want to give some intuitions why. Um, we need this uh, condition, okay? So you have to think this notion of conicality in the following way. If you think about manifolds, for example, if you pick a point of your manifold in a, in, in a neighborhood of this point, you have that your neighborhood looks like Rn, okay? For some dimension. Um, and then, uh, and then we have that in the stratified world, we have this neighborhood look like cones, okay? So for example, if I look near to the equator, I have the one strata and then the two strata. So we can see that as a as the real line, the product of the real line with this object, so you have this kind of, kind of cones, in the sense that this is the cone of the two-point element, okay? 
But now, if I look near my point, I have um, I have that this is equivalent to uh, the product of the point with this cone. This is the real cones. I mean, in the topological sense that we imagine when we think about the cone. Um, so the point ab about conicality is the following. If we start with this topological space, we have the following exit path category. So as I said, I can go, if I start in the zero strata, I can go in this direction. Uh, so I have a morphism from red to green. And then I can go in the other direction. Uh, we already know that they're not uh, equivalent, but I can also start in the red, I mean the zero strata and go to the two strata. So I have this arrow here, and I can go also from the uh, one strata to the two strata. So I have this morphism here and this arrow here. Okay. Uh, but what happens if we look uh, locally? So if I if I look near, if I look near of my zero strata, so I have the following exit path. So now I have the red point and I have two connected components. So now I have these two uh, green points, and uh, I have also the two um, the two strata. Okay. So now uh, the the um, the key point about this is that in a neighborhood of this point in the exit path, this object becomes the initial object of the exit path. Okay. So now, for example, if we look near to the equator, so we have the one strata and the two strata. So we have an exit path uh, going from the from this strata to this strata and going from this strata to this strata. So we have the following exit path. So now you see that our point, I mean, our um, for any point in the one strata becomes an initial object in the exit path category. So this is a this is a really important point. Uh, this is a really important point to show that actually this equivalent uh, works. Okay, so we have the theorem of McPherson, which is really nice. But we want to construct actually the, the equivalence between them. So we want to know which are the functors between these two. Uh, sorry again, Bruno. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I have a, another question, which is before um, you, I don't know, when you stated the theorem of the equivalence, it was now exit less than or less than zero now instead of no. one. So, yeah, it's, it's so, my... So what is that? No, no, the, the, exit, the classical exit path. Ah, but then, okay, I thought before you wrote it with a zero. Oh, right, 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 right. But then in the theorem, it's now exit less than zero. No, it's the same one. It's just, uh, I wrote already. Okay, okay, just a typo then. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we want to pick a representation, so a functor from the exit path category to set. And we want to produce a tick, a, cons a constructible uh, tick. So we're going to divide this free shift. So for each open in our logical space, we're going to pick the, the limit of of f of x uh, with with x uh, is in the exit path of our open. Okay. So our limit is indexed by all the points in the exit path category of our open. Okay. And so now then you can you can, you can verify that you have the, the well. Um I mean you if you have a morphism in this category, which means the inclusion of open, you have here a morphism at the level of uh, limits. And then the other way around, if we uh, there is a lot of there is a lot of things to show. We have to show that actually it's achieved, uh, and then we have to show that this is a constructible fit. And now we want to define uh, another functor. So we're going to start with a uh, uh, constructible shift, and we're going to send to the following uh, to the following uh, exit path category. I mean, for the following representation of the exit path. So 
Uh, we're going to define this object in the following way. So we start with a point in the exit path category and we send it to the start uh, of our of our sheet. Okay. Uh, and then if we have a morphism between uh, points, I mean a morphism in the exit path category, we can use the specialization maps uh, of our sheet to define a morphism going from uh, this spoke to uh, this one or, or the fiber of the sheet. Okay, so the important things thing to know is that we have this equivalence between uh, constructible shifts and functor from the exit path category to sets. Okay. Um, so now, uh, okay. So, uh, so now I want to do uh, the second upgrade of abstraction of uh, this notion um, it will be given by the two categorical version of the exit path category. So I'm going to speak uh, very, very, very rapidly about the uh, definition of a two category. Um, so a strict two category consists of the following, of the following data. So we have a class of objects, then for each pair of objects X and Y, we have a category, uh, category X, Y. And then if I pick two objects, um, we call that the one cells and a morphism between them are called the two cells, okay? So if you remember the definition of a category that uh, Virgil um, gave the last time, so we have this, uh, we have these objects and then we have a morphism and we want to have a good uh, compositional law. Uh, in the two categorical cases, it's more, uh, it's more complicated, so I'm not going to give this definition. So we have a good uh, identity, which is given by the terminal category, and then we have also vertical and uh, horizontal composition. But uh, you have to think about, uh, you have to think at two categories using the following example. So you can use the example of the category of small categories, as object categories, then the one cells or one morphism are given by functors, and then the two cells are given by natural transformation. So now you, you can forget all that, and now you can think about two categories in this way. Okay. So we can define the exit path two category in the following way. So we take the objects as the points of our topological space, and then the one morphism are exit path between two objects, and then the two morphism are homotopy classes of homotopy between exit path. So if you remember, uh, in the one categorical case, we pick the one morphism as homotopy class of exit path. Now I'm going to take the exit path uh, without, without this relation of homotopy. Okay. Then the two morphism will be the homotopy classes between uh, the homotopy classes classes of homotopies between exit path. Okay. So, uh, so now, okay, we are in the two categorical world. We have the notion of uh, we have the notion of an exit path, two category. Now I remember, uh, I remember you. You have in the left side of equivalence locally constant shift or constructible shift in the stratified world, which is the good note notion of a locally constant shift in the two categorical world. Okay. For this, we have to speak about stacks. I'm not gonna speak really, really well about the stacks. I think it's really difficult to do it. I give the definition just in a very I don't know, I means the mathematical feeling that you have to give the definition, even if the more important is to have the intuition about uh, this object. Okay. So I thought, uh, we're going to start with a two side. You have to think about the sites, like, uh, the category of open sets. And now you can see that as a two category. So a stack is a two functor from the old two side of X to the category of groupoids. I remember that groupoids are categories where uh, all morphism are isomorphism. So group, uh, the category of groupoids, it's a subcategory of the category of all categories. Okay. 
uh, that satisfy a condition of this. Okay. So we have to think. So now you can forget the definition of uh, a stack. Um, and it's not quite. Uh, it's not quite. Uh, it's not quite. Um, no. Okay. Let's move on <laughs> about this definition. So how um, can we think about it? In the one categorical case, we start with pre sheets. Okay. So we start with pre sheets uh, as the as as a contravariant functor from open sets to uh, a category C. So I said that this category could be anything uh, that you want uh, with some conditions, but you can put sets, uh, R modules, or um, or more algebra categories. But for example, you can put also the category of all categories. Okay. And then I said that we define a shift as a pre-shift that satisfies some conditions. So now the situation, it's it's the same. We start with a category uh, X, it's, and then I, I forget to put uh, up here. So we start with a uh, category here, and then I send that to the to the category of groupoids. Uh, so I have that the category of all small categories is a two category. So this is actually a two functor. I, I didn't define the notion of a two functor. Uh, but this is the way that you have to have this notion of pre shift. Then we take the two categorical version. Then we impose the condition of a shift. Uh, and then here, the condition in some way of shift is given by this condition of, uh, okay. So how you, how do you have to think about stacks or, I mean, topological stacks? It's like you have to think about it as a topological space, uh, where the points are no longer points, but clusters of points that you will identify, but you don't want to identify and really identify. You want to consider as equals, but you want to remember in the way that they are equal. Okay, so you you don't think uh, a stack as a composite by points, by but as a cluster of points. Okay, so the meta mathematical principle is never identify a equivalent object, only remember the that they can be identified and remember the way that that they can be identified. Okay, so this is a really important point about uh, stacks or topological stacks. Um, so now we have this theorem of Truman that tells us if we pick a stratified space and we have a category of p constructible stacks, which is naturally equivalent to the two category of two functors. Uh, going from the exit path to the category of all categories. Look, you have to you have to remember that uh, in the um, in the former case we consider here functors going from the exit path to the category of sets. Here we consider uh, the functors going from the two exit path to the category of all categories. Okay, so so. This theorem is not just a uh, abstract no sense. There is also some uh, some applications when we consider the stack of perverse sheets. Okay, I'm not going to speak about it, but just to know that there are people working uh, with this kind of stuff, and if it is not an abstract no sense, uh, so yeah. And so just to finish, uh, okay. As to finish, I want to do the, the last upgrade of this uh, equivalence using the notion of infinity category. So I'm not going to define the notion of infinity categories, but I want to give the good, uh, the good intuition about these objects. Okay. So now we want to have some analog of the fundamental group. Okay. Uh, so now, for example, we start with uh, with a square with a hole in the middle. We have two loops, uh, two root path. We know, for example, that the path this path is not equivalent with this path because you have actually this hole in the middle. Okay. But now, if we go higher in dimension, I mean, if I pick a cube with a hole in the middle, and now the hole is a three dimensional, so it's a sphere in the middle. So now, if you pick two points here, and you pick the uh, two paths. Two paths which are given in the this path, so the, the blue ones. 
So now you see that these two paths, paths are equivalent because actually now you have some freedom, dimensional freedom. So you can go, um, you can go up to the sphere and arrive to the other side of the, of the sphere. So you have these two paths are equivalent, but actually you can do the same going below the sphere. So you start here, you go below the sphere and you arrive to the other side. Uh, of the sphere, so you arrive to the other path. So now these two paths are equivalent. In the, the former case, um, they were not equivalent. But now uh, we can imagine that each time that I move my path, I'm going to color uh, the trajectory of the path. Okay. So if I start move this path up to the sphere, so I arrive to a place, so at the end I will have some kind of the surface, um, some surface here uh, with the color red. And then if I go in the other side, we will have some surface uh, below the sphere. Okay. And now you can think about it. This is two types, this is two different homotopies between paths. But now you know that your, you know that these homotopies are, are not equivalent because actually in the middle you have the sphere. So you cannot deform one homotopy into another one. So in some sense, uh, you have that these two paths are equivalent, but, but are equivalent in a different way. Okay. So you want to have some uh, some mathematical object that encodes all this higher information. So for now, we can introduce the the fundamental. Um, oh, uh, sorry, the definitive group, right? It is given by objects are points of our topological space. Now, morphisms are paths between points. Two morphisms are homotopies between paths, and then three morphisms are homotopies between homotopies, and so on. Uh, so this is really just an intuition about this object. I'm not even defined properly. I'm really sorry for the multiple theories. Uh, so now we have we have this notion of infinity groupoid. Uh, and actually now we can rewrite the monotomy equivalent from the beginning in the, in this context of infinity category. So if we pick a topological space, we have the following equivalent between infinity categories. So the counter from the infinity groupoid to uh, the infinity category of spaces. So if you remember in the monotomy case, we consider uh, the fundamental group of it, and then we consider the category of sets. In the infinity categorical world, it's the category of uh, the, the infinity category of spaces that take uh, this place. Okay, and now uh, we have a locally constant shift with coefficients uh, spaces. So for sure, I'm not going to define uh, this notion of infinity shift uh, in this context, um, but you have to know that we have this equivalence uh, between them. So, uh, yeah. so now we have the monotomy equivalence in the context of infinity categories. So the question is, what happens if I go to the stratified world? Okay. So I have to define the exit path infinity category. Okay. Um, so I pick a stratified space, then I can define the exit path category actually as a simplicial subset of this simplicial set, um, the simple simplicial set. So, which is given by this kind of simplex. So now we have here the topological simplex, um, complex, uh, such that there exists a chain of elements of my whole set, such that if I pick a point in this topological object, we have that the image of this point uh, is in the A strata. <clears throat> okay, these are really weird uh, and maybe uh, yeah weird definition. But actually, if you if you think a little bit about it, it's really the definition of here. I have a stratified space. Here I have uh, I have a topological space which has an a canonical stratification. Uh, so actually, this definition is just uh, a morphism in the category of stratified space. So a theorem by Lurie tells us that if 
uh, if x is conically space or if I space, then active path category is actual an infinity category. Because you know, in this definition, the active path is a simplicial subset of uh, of this um of this object. So we have to show that actual is an infinity category. And it is the case when uh, x is a conically uh, stratified space. Okay. And there is some counterexample about stratified space. And not uh, uh, infinity so, so the uh, theorem of exodromy in the infinite categorical context is a that yeah, is a theorem of Lurie in higher algebra always uh, that tells us that if we pick a for a, for a compact topological space which is locally of singular shape and equipped with a conical t stratification where P satisfies the ascending condition, then there is a natural equivalence between the constructible shifts and the functors going from the exit path category uh, to the category of spaces. Uh, I really wanted to write all the conditions uh, to just to tell that there is a lot of conditions, so it's quite annoying to have uh, all these conditions. So, so first of all, uh, let's look a little bit this equivalence. So the way to see that how this equivalent uh, work is like this category. Uh, uh, this category here would have a classical uh, Grothian construction in the infinity categorical world, which is called the straining of unstraining, uh, which gives us this category as left vibration over exit path category. So are the objects uh, over this exit path category. And now from this category, it's really easy to see the functor going in that way. So we pick an object over the exit path category, and then we can, we can send it to the following, to the following, uh, to the following pre ship which is actually uh, an infinity ship. Um, so just to finish, uh, there is some, remarks about this equivalence, which is really nice. Actually, in this equivalence, we can work with uh, quite general coefficients. Particularly, we can work with stable infinity categories, which is really, really nice. Uh, and with these so improvements of this theorem uh, in the following sense, so we have this paper of Porta uh, and Pastier, uh, where we replace the condition that x is locally of singular shape. This is a condition about the about the infinity shift associated to our topological space. They remove the ascending high condition of our on our pole set, and then they give an explicit formula for the inverse. Really, really nice. And then we have Hain, Porta, and Tesla, uh, and they are to work beyond this condition of conicality, which is really, really nice. And it's a paper from this year, one month ago. And you use a really, really beautiful techniques like stratifying topos and stuff. I see. Okay, so just to finish, uh, this is the last, last slide, I promise. Uh, so we have some application, application <laughs> uh, in, other, um, in other fields of mathematics outside uh, homotopy theory. So we have this paper of Barwick, Glassman, and Hain uh, of exodromy, which is called exodromy. Uh, and they find an I mean, they work in a really algebraic geometry context. So they identified this category, uh, which it, I mean, it's quite complicated. And uh, they identified this category as some kind of exit path category. Uh, so they work really in the context of uh, et al. sheets, um, a really algebraic geometry uh, context. So then we have, we have uh, the work in unstable algebraic K theory. Uh, by Mikala Janssen, we have two papers in 2020 and 2021. Uh, and then we have also a paper of Mikala Janssen uh, working in modulus SAC. Uh, then we have also works in synthetic geometry uh, by David Nander. And to finish, uh, we have also this kind of stratified topo, which is really, really cool. And there is also work in motivic homotopy theory uh, using this kind of object. So all that to tell you that there is a lot of work uh, using this kind of technique and there is not just a uh, homotopy theory stuff or homotopy theory abstract nonsense. 
Okay, so, so yeah, I think uh, I'm done. Okay, uh, let's thank uh, Bruno for his talk. Um, does anyone have any questions for Bruno? Um, it, I think uh, I think I've heard one time that uh, the exit path infinity category of a stratified space was supposed to be a layered infinity category, so it cannot be anything there. So, like, do you know why that is? I mean, uh, you can think about it. Uh, I mean, if you think uh, with the um, with the infinity group, for example. So these are functor from I mean political spaces uh, through the um, to the spatial sets, okay, and they do this uh, Canquillian equivalence between uh, all the things. Okay, I mean the, the classical Canquillian equivalence between spatial sets and political spaces. Mm -hmm. but, um, so uh, there is uh, okay. So in the in this case. Uh, the exit path category is really the 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 homotopy type in the stratified world. So when you say a layered infinity category, it's really imposing uh, this stuff. Is the condition right, that? But, but doesn't layered mean that I don't know that somehow there cannot be non-trivial endomorphism of objects or maybe automorphisms? Yeah, because. I mean, in the yeah. in the example you showed for the exit path one category, then there could totally be uh, endomorphism of objects, but maybe it just so happens that um, that these become null homotopic in the higher versions. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I'm mean, the paper of Lucas to, to yeah of Lucas Vas, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay. In our to the okay. Okay. Thanks for the talk. Are there any more questions for the speaker? Are there any questions in the room? Okay. Um, I guess there are no more questions. Um, uh, so, okay, let's thank the speaker one more time. <laughs>